Getting your audio file to meet ACX standards can be an extremely frustrating process. You've watched hours of YouTube videos, followed every step, purchased every plugin, went into crippling debt buying a $3,000 microphone. But when you upload your audio file into the audio lab, it says, your RMS sucks, your noise floor is too high, you don't have the correct spacing at the start and at the end, you sound like you're swallowing your microphone and I can hear the desperation in your voice of wishing your dog thought of you as its best friend instead of your ex. Did you talk to my mom before this? Deeply, deeply depressing. But there is still hope to be had because you're about to learn how to never struggle meeting ACX standards again. You can have great sounding audio without the highest end microphone or interface or even the top plugins. Your recording space is the single most crucial part of making your audio sound great and pass ACX requirements. Because one of the requirements of ACX is to have a noise floor that doesn't exceed minus 60 decibels. But if your recording space isn't treated correctly, you're going to pick up echoes into the microphone, possibly your computer fans, your air vents in your home, your dog barking, kids making noise, your wife yelling at you through the door saying that you don't spend enough time with her or the kids. You get my point. But do what you can overall to help fix these things because they do impact your overall RMS, your noise floor, and audio quality in general. Otherwise, use what microphone you want, use what interface you want, and also research if a dynamic microphone or a condenser is better for your recording space. Step two, give up on your old mixing process. This right here is the meat and potatoes of the whole process. <laughs> <laughs> the order in which you mix your audio files is extremely, extremely important. What I'm talking about here is when you should use compression, when you should use restoration, when you should use a limiter, etc, etc. Because the order in which you do these can impact the RMS levels, the audio quality, how high your peaks are in the audio. So what's the recommended order they should be done in? Here's a basic example. First, restoration. Second subtractive EQ, third, compression, fourth, additive EQ, and fifth, normalize. Starting at the top, restoration will include things like using a noise gate, upward compression, and getting rid of mouth noises and clicks, basically removing all of the unwanted noises in your audio. You want to do things like this before you use compression, because if you use compression before, all of those unwanted noises are just gonna be brought up, they're gonna be louder, and they're gonna be a lot harder to eliminate later on. Also, consider using upward compression as opposed to a noise gate. Noise gates are fantastic, but sometimes they can start artifacting the quality quality of the audio if done incorrectly where upward compression sounds a little bit more natural. Second, subtractive EQ. Now I'm not going to go into depth on how to do this, but basically it's pretty much the same as like additive EQ, right? Instead of raising the parts of the audio that you're wanting to hear or the, of your voice, the frequencies that sound good, you're going to go through and remove the frequencies or lower the frequencies that sound harsh or just aren't really adding much to the audio, right? Subtract those down before you compress. So that way when you compress, only the good sounding parts of the EQ will be brought up when the compression hits. Also, if done correctly, you can help eliminate some of the room noise that gets picked up in the microphone. Third is compression. This is what's going to level out your audio. It takes the quiet parts and raises them up to make them louder, or it will take the louder parts and bring them down so they're not peaking so much and help equalize out all of the audio. Again, we do this for step three because we want to remove unwanted noises, room noises, mouth noises, etc., before we compress so that that way when we get to this step of compression, it sounds much more natural, everything's a lot cleaner. And when it comes to audiobooks and narration, we want want things to sound as natural as possible. Number four, additive EQ. After compression is finished, it's time to highlight those areas of our voice that just sound so good. Maybe your voice doesn't have enough low end, or maybe it's not clear enough, so you wanna add some high end to add some of that clarity back into the vocal. This step is where it's done. I do need to stress though that this can be overdone. Adding too much to the low end can make your voice sound very muddy. Adding too much to the high end can make yourself sound way too airy. All those harsh high end noises start coming out and it's not fun to listen to. So make sure you're very conservative with your adjustments so they don't end up being too much. And fifth is normalize. Congratulations, you have made it to the easy part. Different programs have different ways of doing this, but they're all very similar. 
All you need to make sure of is that you normalize your audio to either negative three or 3.1 decibels. In Adobe Audition, for example, up in the favorites tab, there's a quick selection to normalize to negative three dB, which makes things fairly simple. Now for the stressful part checking the noise floor and RMS levels. Again, each program has their own unique way of doing this. Audacity, for example, requires a few third-party plugins to make this possible. And in Adobe Audition, up in the top right, we have the loudness tab. For Adobe Audition, in the top right corner of the screen, click these two arrows and select loudness. Highlight your audio file in the top left, and in the bottom left, hit scan selection. This will bring up the values of your audio file. While there are a lot of numbers that pop up, we're only concerned with a few values. These values are peak and true peak, total RMS amplitude, and minimum RMS amplitude. We want the true peak to be three or 3.1. This is what normalizing is going to accomplish. We want the total RMS to be between negative 18 and 23. This is what compression helps with, which means the average volume of the audio. And we want the RMS to be negative 60 decibels or lower. This number represents the noise floor. But what happens if you normalize at the end and still things aren't acceptable in ACX parameters? If the peak is too low, then you probably didn't normalize correctly. If the total RMS is too high, meaning it's over negative 18 decibels, you use too much compression, which means the audio is too loud. If it's under negative 23 dB, then the audio is too quiet and you need to add a little more compression. If your noise floor is too high, then you may need to do a little more restoration on the audio. Remember, restoration should happen at the very start. If you compress before doing this, the noise floor also gets raised and you can make the audio quality bad. And that's it. Well, almost. I do have one more tip for you, but don't worry, it doesn't have anything to do with editing. After you've found what settings and plugins work best for you, make sure you save them as a template. That way, the next time you record an audition or an audio file or whatever, you can select this template and all of those settings will automatically be applied. And as long as your recording environment was exactly the same and the conditions were exactly the same, the audio file should be edited in the exact same way. Or if you have daddy's money, you can pay somebody else to do it like all the other professionals done, but <laughs> where's the headache in that? If this video has helped you, please consider subscribing and happy narrating.